Hello, it's Mike Levin from MikeLevinSEO.com and now it's time to finally get this form into the correct form. And first thing we're going to do is get rid of everything but the form. We don't need additional parameters, especially now that we understand uh, what's going on with the arguments being fed to render template. We feel a little bit more in control and can just feed the template name and the form object to render templates. Uh, in doing so, we also must change the template itself. I'm just going to strip out all this H1 stuff. Maybe we'll throw in an H1 saying pipulate. And we'll do that for the title tag as well. And now these hidden things are like a system uh, thing that renders automatically. But when we get down to here, form name label. Uh, this is stuff that we set over here in my form. Uh, another thing I'll do is get rid of the genericness of my form. This is the pipulate form, pip form. And uh, let's see, we gotta find that other reference to my form. Change word, pip form. Make sure there's no more my form references. And after the server detects the change, we will do a refresh here. Make sure that all is still good. Yes, all is still good. Now we don't need name. What we want is, uh, well, for the string field, that's gonna be, whoops, a G key. Word. Uh, let's see. GT. I'll use the short names right now. There's going to be issues I'll be learning and figuring out, uh, which is uh, the difference between the labels of a field and the actual uh, name of the field. Uh, we have these validators. Um, data required. Well, there's going to be mutual mutually exclusive requirements. When I get the file upload in here, either one or the other is going to be required. Uh, let's take a look at our examples and um, yeah, jumping ahead to the, the file field. Uh, this is a string field. These are all the basic types of things you can submit. Let's see, basic fields. Boolean, date, date time, decimal, file upload, da -da -da -da. radio, select, all these selects, submit, string field. Okay, and this is how you refer to it, form dot, uh, whatever you named it, I suppose. So I think we can just uh, tear out right now the validators. I'll put validators in when we're validating certainly makes it easier to look at. Save. Now we have this G key thing. We've got to refer to that in the template. It's no longer form.name. Now well, let's do an update. G key. Ah, there you have it. Form name label. Form name label. How does it know to pull G key? Now let's knock this guy down to the next row. I think I might need to put a BR in there. Let's look back over here. Name equals, that's how it knows, it's name. Uh, we want this to be GQ. Save. And this likewise 
should become GQ. Now we've got things named how we need it, at least for the first guy. Oh, hmm, nope, I got that wrong. It has to be down on that level. So this is the label. And then this is the input field itself. So it is good to look at those on the same line. Okay. Right. And uh, size 20 is not right. This is actually going to be something much closer to 60 or 80. I'll put 60 in there for now. These uh, Google Doc keys are quite long. Oh, and that's much faster than a server uh, waiting for the server to stop and start. So for edits to the uh, template, you don't have to wait for a server stop and start. And the submit instead of go, we want it to be pipulate. Nice. Okay, so uh, the next step is we're going to get a file upload field in here as well. we'll go back here. And this, I suppose, is where we create the data structure of the form, what it's going to support. And then uh, the template is where we uh, create how it's going to look. And you put all the styling stuff in there. Uh, validation, it appears, is going to be on this side. Uh, we've got quite a bit to learn yet. But as you'll recall, there is this uh, file, file field, file field. And remember, we're using WT forms, and we're also using Flask WTF that creates the integration of WT forms with Flask. So we've got two places to look at documentation, and it's not always 100% clear. But I do recall that when you get to creating forms, the example they give you here uh, is, I believe, a uh, file upload right after the quick start. OK, I'm looking at quick start creating forms. There it is, file uploads. Here's their example. Class photo form, photo, this file field. Well, file field. File field is something imported from Flask, WTF. So I copy that, and then I can say something equals that. we got another line for our imports. And that's from flask underscore WTF, so I can actually just put that here, file field. Get rid of it here. And now I can say CSV file equals file field. And I guess you, uh, the example over here doesn't have anything inside the parent. Oh, yeah, it does. Your photo. There, photo equals your photo. Ah, that's probably where the label comes in. Your CSV file. And let me test that two at once. Your Google spreadsheet key. Save. OK. So now we have a CSV file that we can now use on the form side. Now remember, there's an instance of it being created here. So you have all of it available to you because it's being passed through here. And I call it CSV file. So I should be able to uh, yank, yank, paste, change word, CSV file. CSV file, and I'll get rid of the size definition. I'm not sure what we're going to get for a file upload field yet. Probably just a, a type in field. Server has to stop and start because I changed things on the uh, uh, pie side. Waiting for it to restart. Oh, 
cannot import name file field. Okay, so where I'm trying to import it is on flask underscore WTF import form comma file field F I E L D. Let me look at the examples. Hmm. Ah, okay. It's one level deeper than I suspected, so I outsmarted myself by trying to combine it with that first import. So sometimes imports come from deeper within the library structure. And because of that, we do have to restart. When you get an error like that, it just conks out of the server. Restarting should be available. Refresh. Patience. Voila! Your CSV file. Choose file. And now Pipulate supports either a key string or a file and then Pipulate. The form's getting much closer to what we need. And there you have it. This is where you start to define what the field is, what the data types are, what kind of validation there will be. And then the template is where you actually start to display it, do some aesthetics like how large it is. And I'm sure Python uh, logic is supported at least here uh, and maybe on the other side for uh, validation, checking the length of things. And there is, remember, that submit piece that I took out here. And I believe when you know the, the form is submitted, uh, that uh, page load with the post request is where a lot of validation occurs. It's interesting, it'll be interesting to learn whether validation happens before the submit actually occurs, whether it's populating JavaScript that cuts off the actual attempt to reach the server, or whether it reaches the server, does validation uh, at that point, which would take a little bit longer. So uh, join me next time while I dive deeper into this uh, collection of uh, framework components of Flask WT forms and Flask underscore uh, WTF as we uh, create the Pipulate user interface. Thanks. Talk to you soon.